And as Stephanie mentioned, aerial strikes are costly, but they're also controversial. I talked about the dark side of airstrikes with Ivan Eland. He's a senior fellow at the Independent Institute. Well, the problem is you uh, need somebody on the ground, a friendly force, to call in the airstrikes to, you know, to identify where the enemy is. And also, you also, if you don't have a, a friendly ground force to what they call fix the enemy, and let, in other words, draw it out so the air power can kill the enemy, it's the air, both of those factors make the airstrikes a lot less uh, effective than they would be if, they ha if you do have a friendly ground force that can do both of those things. It, the U.S. is uh, continuing its, its strategy uh, from the air in Iraq. Uh, so talk to me about what are some of the, the, the difficulties that they're running into. Uh, some people say that it's actually weakened the Iraqi military in some respects. I mean, what do you see as the, the overall problems there? Well, I think uh, the problem is that they're saying we killed so many thousands of, of insurgents, but the problem is a lot of times uh, the foreign attacker or occupier doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. I don't think the U.S. is trying to kill civilians there, but you can, with airstrikes, and if you don't have spotters on the ground to, to uh, tell you where to go, you'll hit, end up hitting civilians under any circumstance, but if you don't have these spotters, you're going to hit even more civilians. Well, that creates more insurgents because people get mad that their relatives, innocent civilians, have been accidentally killed, or they don't attribute it to accidental killing. They say, well, somebody's killing my relative. Well, we're going to fight. So uh, you can multiply the insurgency by doing that. You can say, oh, we've killed so many insurgents, but if you have uh, you know, double that or triple that uh, because new recruits have come in because of the bombing campaign, then you really have, you're, you're losing ground, so to speak. So when they throw out a number like 10,000, uh, let's say oh, those 10,000 casualties, each of them has a brother or a couple brothers, suddenly you've got 20,000 new fighters because they're angry, as you say, and they're willing to pick up weapons. Right, and they have, their estimates of military casualties have always been overstated. Uh, so that's a factor as well. But yes, the main effect is to um, multiply the insurgents. You have to be careful not to do that. How are ships like the USS Roosevelt uh, deployed or used? Well, I mean, they, they do airstrikes. Uh, uh, they're less efficient than land strikes uh, from air bases because the runways are shorter. They can hold less ordnance to planes, but the Navy does in a campaign like this does uh, contribute uh, aircraft that are attacking uh, and bombing targets. But three-fourths of the planes come back without attacking. So um, the problem is we have a strategy where we don't want to kill civilians, but on the other hand, we don't have spotters on the ground. So that's why there are so many uh, aerial runs that are coming back uh, with no ordnance drops. But even then, you kill civilians accidentally. Uh, is the fact that uh, ships like these are pivoting to Asia, are, is that a reason for concern for countries like China, given what they can do? Well, of course, uh, there are more ships in the U.S. Navy in Asia now, and I think, uh, yes, that could be a, uh, an issue for China. Um, but uh, China has the advantage of having an asymmetrical strategy. A lot of these uh, ships may be quite vulnerable to cruise missiles and that sort of thing, uh, shot from submarines or just regular surface ships. So uh, the carrier looks awesome, and it can bring some firepower, but it's, it's mainly a show-the-force ship. Ivan Eland, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you.